It was chirping a little bit. All right, what up? We back. Y'all know what time it is. This is the travel vlog. And where are we at? The place we always at. Y'all hear me talk about... <laughs> some of these gas stations, bro. Some of, these, some of these gas stations, man. This thing will not shut up. But anyways, y'all know where we at. We at the gas station, my favorite place to be. I spend, I don't know. I really, I, I, I should keep track. It's probably about 20K. I'm, let's walk this way. Golly, because I can't even hear myself think. But anyways, uh, I'm right here. I'm in my hometown. I'm just like two miles from the house. First stop, we're getting some gas. Headed to South Carolina. This is stage two, the travel vlog. We're going to Santee Cooper. And um, I'm excited to get down to this place. This is a place... So I've been competing professionally, competing, yeah, professionally now. Competing professionally, do my words together. This is my 11th season. And I've never been to Santee Cooper, but it's one of those famous fisheries, tons of big ones. Guys, you know, catch a lot of big stringers on this place. And so it's just a place I've always wanted to go, but never had a tournament there, so I never ventured down there to go. So this week is the week, and I'm hoping for a good week, man. We fresh off Toledo Bend, that was a great week. Um, could have been a little bit better, but hey, we getting off to a really good start and I'm happy about that. So we rolling right into Santee with that same good mojo. About to meet up with the guys, probably have a couple phone calls, you know how we do. Kick it, shoot the breeze, and um, yeah man, catch some bigs. Feels good, it's nice, the weather's nice. It's gonna be a little bit chilly this week. That's the only thing, bro, always gotta be something. MLF coming to town, the weather gets goofy. So it's gonna be lows in the 30s, which I ain't too excited about, but That'll keep them fish definitely in pre-spawn. And so that, you know, we try to play the game of like, will some move up to spawn? Will some not? Well, with the lows being in the 30s and the highs being in the upper 50s, low 60s, the likelihood of fish sliding up to go spawn is very low. I would say pretty much out the window. So it's going to be a full-on wintertime pre-spawn bite, in my opinion. But we still need to get there, drop the boat in, check water temps, all that kind of stuff. So we shall see. Y'all come along for the ride. Boy. I'm calling in for a Q and A. Q and A. Hey, did you drop me a question or what? Man, I got you a question. Where's the tournament about to be won at, Bubba? <laughs> Somewhere between Lake Marion and Lake Moultrie. And if I had uh -huh. to guess, I don't know. I ain't got a freaking clue, bro. It seems like all the all the research that I've done, the upper lake seems to be the player. Seems to be. But you know what that means? That means it's gonna be one on the lower lake. I know, and, and like, part of me is like, damn, I told BJ, I said, you know what? I'm going to go off the grid this week. I'm going to go all in on the lower lake. Dude, that's not, hey, it's, it's funny you say, I, I was thinking something like that too, bro. It's like, you know all the pressure is going to be up north on that upper lake, naturally, right? Because it's because of history. But now, I think with the with, with the way forward face sonar is, it just opens up a whole nother can of worms, man. Where y'all at? We're like uh, two and a half hours away. Damn, y'all riding, boy. You're going to be there before me. I ain't doing anything. I haven't touched my Ross since my last tournament, so I figured I'd come over here and touch <laughs> Hey, you cracked me up, bro. Hey. I ain't mad at you, uh, though. Did you, but you ain't do no commercial fishing or nothing, did you? Uh, no, I hung out with my damn family the whole time. That's what, there, there you go, bro. Now, okay, now for that, I, I ain't going to make fun of you, bro. Oh, you get, you give me a free pass. Yeah, I give you, I give you a family, you get a family pass, bro, for sure. Especially with them little ones you got, bro. Yeah. Dude, it's hard, man. Gaston got dummy hot, and then they trick you, bro. Hey, I got a pet peeve. All these gas stations do that. Two ninety nine gas, right? You roll to the pump, boom, swipe your card, hit the button, then it flash up. 309, big dog. I didn't drove four miles off the highway, all based upon your 299 sales pitch, for you to get me at the pump, and it's 309? That's the cash price. Big dog, that's the cash price. That's what I ain't got is. no cash, bro. It's 2024. Don't nobody got no cash. Well, yeah, I do. I got 20 bucks. But that ain't enough to fill up this beast, man. So y'all gotta get this region's credit card, right? 
for two ninety nine, bro. Stop doing that. Pissing me off. <laughs> look at this. Oh, look at this. We have your back. We are your way. We are neighbors. Three thirty two, right? In communities around. Look at the sales pitch. The sales pitch. Three twenty nine. This one ain't that bad. This ain't a great example. Cause usually it's ten cent. This one is just. No, they always three flash cent. the cash price. They flash that cash price. Always. But I always bite the bait, bro. Here I come off the highway. Come get it. Sight? Yeah, 10, 10 cent higher. Something new we doing in the travel vlog. Um, I'm, I'm putting out these polls on my Instagram because I want you guys to ask questions. So I, I just felt like this would be a cool way for me to interact with you guys. Um, and there's a lot of questions that we don't get a chance to cover in our travel vlogs, fishing vlogs, anything we do. So if you guys want part to participate in this, Make sure you guys follow me on Instagram because I'll do a poll for every tournament and then I'll come here and we'll answer these questions. So Colin has picked out, I think 10, nine or 10? Nine or 10, yeah. Nine or 10 questions. We got a lot, a lot of questions, but we picked out nine or 10. I don't even know what they are. Colin's just gonna read them off and I'm gonna do my best to answer them. So raw, uncut, straight, straight to it. All right, the first one is from JCB. He said, he's kind of coming at you here. He getting at me? Why didn't you get in the creek last season? No. And will you get in the creek this season? Okay, the creek, man. So, shout out to all my viewers that watch that watch the creek series and just enjoy creek fishing in general. Something I'm very passionate about. I love fishing the creek. So, I actually did get in the creek a couple times this year. I just didn't record because I didn't have my boy DC with me. And so, I felt like in order to make the creek series what it is, I needed to have DC come along and he was, you know, we're all busy, man. And, and we just didn't have an opportunity to link up. But I promise you, with or without DC or Jacob or Adrian or whoever, I will be bringing you guys more Creek videos. So that's something I genuinely love. And so I will definitely do more Creek series videos. Y'all stay tuned for that. Thanks for that question too, by the way. This is from Drew B. He says, what Drew are B. you expecting weather slash patterns at this event all right so how's it gonna go down how's it gonna go down santee cooper i'm really not sure right but this is what i'm anticipating we've had a lot of rainfall here in the area recently i'm expecting some dirty to stained water and i'm expecting these fish to be in a more of a winter pre-spawn pattern so you know it's so hard to see all this target rich environment and not want to get up there and, and flip trees and throw a wacky rig on trees or um, throw a swim jig around aquatic vegetation and some of that's gonna play don't get me wrong but I still think these fish are gonna set up in a little bit of deeper water at four to eight foot range the ditches leading into these spawning places more pre-spawn stuff slash winter you know uh, they may even build be in some of the deeper creek channels you know, more of that 10 to 12, 15 foot range, possibility. But I'm anticipating them to be in, in, the, in the, the points and the ditches leading into spawning areas. So a rattle trap, I think is gonna be a big player. A chatterbait, I think is gonna be a big player. Um, a jig or some sort of soft plastic being flipped or pitched around uh, cypress trees, I think that's gonna play. Um, and then I think there's an outside chance Live scope is still going to be a big deal, man. Guys panning around, seeing them, and throwing to them individual bass swimming around. I, I still think that might be a big deal. So, I don't know. We're going to have to find out. However, whatever, we need to reel them in. That's for sure. All right. Eli, you've, you've gotten this one a few times. But All right. Gas mileage on the new rig. Gas mileage on a new everybody Tundra. Everybody wants to know. I, I know everybody wants to know. And so what's cool about this Tundra, if I can get it to come up, it don't lie. It has it right here. And so you can pan the camera over or I can just show you. I have right now 10.7 miles per gallon. Now, is that good? No, it's not that great. But let me break that down to you guys. So I have this 2023 Tundra Platinum the IMAX, right? It's lifted, has a three inch lift on it. And I have probably, I don't know, Colin, what would you say? 33 or 35 inch tires. 33 or 35 inch tires. So pretty big wheels with the lift and a rod coffin, loaded down with all my gear. It's pretty 
and you got a big wind, wind back there. And I got a 21 and a half foot Ranger. We all know how heavy they are that I'm towing, and that's what I'm getting. And that's the raw uncut. The, the truck don't lie. So that's just keeping it all the way real. Now, with that being said, reliability of this vehicle, and the I, I'm impressed with this truck, man. I really am. The power, by it being a V6 twin turbo, I was a little apprehensive. I'm like, man, this thing ain't gonna have as much power as my other truck, which was a Tundra V8, but it actually has more. So when I'm towing up and down these highways, this thing gets it, bro. And it has a little feature right here, tow haul, and then I could put it in tow haul, sport. If I turn that little knob, she really get giddy, get up and get it then, bro. You put you put it in that tow haul sport, whoop, whoop, riding, so. Gas mileage not the greatest, but overall excellent vehicle. Well, and if you didn't have your boot, it would be. Yeah, if I wasn't if I wasn't towing, it would yeah. be a lot better. Plus, blood, plus, like I said, most people aren't putting three inch lifts and big tires on there yeah. too, so you gotta compensate for that. All right, next one. Move M along. Verde. Yeah, what Verde. are your three favorite trap colors? Ooh, that's tough, boy. Three favorite rattle trap colors. All right. I gotta start. Let's let's start here. Tried and true. All around the world, all species, any time of year. Chrome with a blue back. Yo, granddaddy throw it. My granddaddy throw it, and I'm still throwing it. A chrome and blue back will catch you a bass pretty much anywhere. So he's up there. But I'm in love with crawfish, man. I really am. And I have a wide variety of craw colors that I like, but you're asking me to pick my favorite. So I'm just gonna give you one crawfish. The number on this pattern is called 46R, also known as red crawfish. Very vibrant, bright, orangey crawfish pattern with, with some black in it. It's basically black and orange, the whole bait. And it is just a flat fish catcher especially this time of year i'd say from december to about the end of march can't beat him off color water he's getting a bite that's my second one. my third last but not least i'm gonna have to go with tennessee gold that's one i've done really 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 well on over the years i got him tied up in the box right now i got tennessee gold tied up i got um Toledo Gold, because I had that from Toledo Bend, so he's still tied on. And then I got a hammer trap in Oyster right now. That's just right now. But my, those are my top three. If I just had to pick three, okay? I got Chrome Blue Bag, Red Crawfish, Tennessee Gold. That's my top three. All right. Yes, sir. Next one is from Tim McIntyre. He said, what is a fishery or two that you would like to see the BPT tour visit in the future? Great question. And y'all know me, I'm from out west, I'm a California cat. I'm biased, man. I've never competed in a national event on my home pond. Any of my home ponds, some that I'm not even that familiar with. But I'm saying that to say I've never fished a big tournament out west anywhere. I would love to see Major League Fishing sow some love to the west. And I'm not gonna even jump out there and say like my home pond, which is the California Delta, I'm going to just say out west, period. I love to go to Idaho and fish Coeur d'Alene. I'd love to go up to Washington State and fish, uh, uh, um, oh, God, Lake Washington, uh, potholes. Uh, I'd love to go to New Mexico, Elephant Butte. I mean, there's the, 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 the options are limitless out west. I would just like to go westward to expand the tour for one, showcase some different fisheries for two, and for three, show the West Coast some love because we always catch the short end of the stick. It don't matter what tour it is. We rarely, rarely go out West. We don't even have BFLs out West. It's crazy. So there we go. Just some out West, man. That's that's where I'm, I'm going to say. All right. This next one. Everybody's favorite question. Let's hear it. From Hot Defoe. My boy Otter threw a question in there. Should forward-facing sonar be banned do we gotta take it out <laughs> oh my god my boy otter went there should forward-facing sonar be banned i know that's the topic of the 
century right now. That's the topic of the week, of the month, of the hour, of the year. Everybody's chattering for faces on our and rightfully so, man. It's um it's taken over bass fishing. It has. It really has. But uh, you know what's really shocking to me when it comes to four face sonar? People act like it just came out yesterday. Yeah. It's been out for six, seven years now. It's but what's happening is guys are understanding and they're learning and get, becoming better with it and are able to utilize it in situations we never could before. And so to answer your question, Ott, shout out to Ott. If y'all don't follow Ott on YouTube, Give my boy a check. Uh, check him out, man. He's uh, he puts out a lot of great content as well. Um, I'm gonna say absolutely not. I, I think four face sonar should not be banned. I mean, heck, at the end of the day, why would we want to ban something that helps us catch fish better? Don't y'all like to catch fish? I like to catch fish. I, I know I do. Yeah. It only makes us understand bass better. It's a tool. Um, it's no different from all the advancements over the years. We went from 2D sonar to ooh, down scan, side scan. I can see a brush pile 80 feet over there now. You know, there's been so many technical technological advancements. You look at Hummingbird with 360, um, it, it's endless, right? And they're all just advancements of the technology world. Live scope, active target, mega live, it's no different. There will become a time where you pan over there and you see a bass and genetically he's going to know to get the heck out of Dodge because he's felt that and seen that and heard that so many times. They will become conditioned to it just like they become conditioned to an Alabama rig. It's no different. That bait doesn't nearly catch him like it used to. Matter of fact, I think they run from it in some cases. And so I feel like it's just another tool, man. And it's right now, it's the hype, it's the craze. A lot of old school fishermen don't like to see it. Uh, it doesn't make for the greatest television. I agree with that. But at the end of the day, it's an excellent tool that allows us to learn more about bass. It's helped me out a ton. Um, I've made a lot of money doing it. So has a lot of other guys. I think the resistance comes from, it's not affordable for your everyday guy. I definitely get that. And it makes terrible television. And I get that too. But now we're split screening and we're showing you guys what we're seeing. I think that really helps. Y'all let me know. Drop a comment about that. Do you guys like the split screen that we're now doing on Major League Fishing where you can see the guy fishing and you can see his graph at the same time? I think that really helps the viewer understand what's going on and helps you guys learn as well too. So that's just my two cents. But shout out to Ah for dropping me a question, man. I appreciate that, Ah. To answer your question, the answer is no, it should not be banned. This one is from 915 Yak Fishing Club. All right. How much fruit do you eat in a month? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a How good question. How many melons in one month? Hey, I ain't gonna lie, y'all. I had a little cheat day today. I ate some Zaxby's, man. Me and Colin pulled up on Zaxby's. That's terrible for me, but I, I did eat it. So y'all don't y'all don't go in on me too bad. But bro, I go through a lot of fruit, man. I love 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 fruit. Um, I feel like. I feel better when I'm when I'm on a primarily fruit diet, and I look better. I'm in better like physical shape, everything, man. So I love fruit, man. I I, I spent a lot of money. Did he ask how much money do I spend? No, he just said how, how much, much fruit. Man, I don't even no, dude. Like right now, we're we're sliding down here to Santee. Our first stop is a grocery store, and I'm gonna drop at least a hundred dollars on fruit, at least, and that's for like the week, right, to get me through the week. But it'll probably throughout the course of the week be more than that you know and so of course fruit's seasonal so i'm limited to what i can get man but you know i'll, I'll hit up some fruit stands as it gets warmer and stuff like that y'all didn't seen it i pull yeah, up on a fruit year. stand last year i didn't what i got like five six watermelons no that was some, the some Cayuga Cayuga, man long. bro I, hey i'm gonna yeah. hit a fruit stand i'm coming for y'all and i love all fruits bro all my melons all my citrus um everything grapes you name it and so I'll probably go through, I'm going to say $300 a month. I don't know. That's just a guess. Probably more. More than that, you think? I think so. All right, $400. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. $500. Yeah. I don't know. I eat a lot of fruit, bro. Yep. All right. The This is the last one for now. Then we'll, we'll save one more All right. a little bit later. But All right. This is uh, that slow 
works, I think. I don't know, you'll see on the screen. What's your favorite way to fish? My favorite way to catch a bass? Yes. Um, if I could only pick one way to catch one, dobbing a mat, flipping a mat, bro. At home. At home. Well, anywhere. Anywhere mat fishing is good. Yeah. You know, like Florida occasionally can have good mat fishing. California Delta, in my opinion, is phenomenal when it's when it's going. Um, it's rare that we get an opportunity to do that on tour. Saginaw Bay was amazing, but that wasn't really mat fishing, but that was like heavy flipping, and that place is phenomenal, bro. But um, that's my favorite way. Give me an ounce to a two ounce weight, a big flipping stick, preferably mines, some 50 pound braid, and turn me loose on some mats, I'm a happy, happy guy. And they don't even gotta be biggins, but like two, two and a halfs to whatever. Just getting that bite in that mat and not knowing what you about to swing on, mm, something special about that. That's it for now. All right, we got one more for you. We saving, we got one more question we're saving when we pull up on our boy DC, because the question involves him. Yep. And we're gonna get his two cents on that. Y'all stay tuned. All right, so the last question from right. Bronze Back Billy. Bronze, Bronze Back, back Billy. Okay. From IG. All right. Does DC not finishing the whole trolley gummy worm drive you nuts? Hey, listen. <laughs> we like DC about this all the time. It's low-key weird. High-key, bro. Yeah, I figured. Well, man chew up, my that. man chew up the trolleys and then spit. Look, so th here's your chance to defend yourself, Sizzle. Explain to the people what you're really doing, bro. Here's my whole thought process. Y'all ready? All right, so like all my life, and y'all can't lie. Y'all comment below. When you eat gummy bears, so that gumminess, <laughs> so, so the gummies, yeah, they don't digest well. And y'all, we've all had it happen. Where you eat a lot of gummy bears and your stomach just got that, oh, and it kind of hurts. Yeah. So like I said, screw this. That I love the gummy worms. Yeah. I fool with him. The glow worms. Like, tough. I like him. Yeah. I like the way he tastes. <laughs> he good. But once you eat him, he's gone. You don't you don't taste him no more. He's gone. So I said, I'm going to get all the taste out of him, and I'm going to spit him back out. That way I can <laughs> escape the, the stomach ache. And low-key, if you're on a diet, if, you, if you're hardcore and you love, like, Chick-fil-A chicken, let's say you love fried chicken, but you're on a diet, just chew him up until you get all you need out of him. Right before you spit him, right before you swallow him, just spit him back spit out. Spit him back up. And you enjoyed everything about that chicken, but you didn't. But you didn't eat him. You didn't eat him. Ain't that what they call, like, anorexia? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my boy, listen. One of a kind. DC, I'm just bro. trying to avoid the gummy. I ain't mad at you. Ache. Look, look. Now, you know what's crazy? I, I, I know that feeling because I, I have smashed some gummies yes. and, it, and he ain't lying, bro. You eat too many gummies. hurts. Bad. Hey, look, I'm telling you what else Stomach hurts. Stomach ache. Then, yeah, well, I'm just going to shoot y'all straight. If you enjoy a nice cold beverage, cold beer. Yeah. If you drink a few of them, if you're overserved, if you're a Catholic, <laughs> <laughs> if you're overserved <laughs> a little bit, wait, wait, do look. not drink anything sugary. That sugar does not digest well. With the beer. It hurts like your stomach hurts really, really bad. Yeah. So all that sugar really ain't good for you. At so all. just don't eat the gummy. Just, just get a little bit of up. sugar out of it. <laughs> Instead hurt? of a heartache and a gummy ache, you ain't got none of that. You yeah. Ain't. You just enjoy it. You you be good to go. That's it. Hey, y'all heard it from the horse's mouth, bro. Hey, there it is. Hey, and low key. This is what we do with these bass. We catch them, we reel them in, we enjoy them, and we let them and go. We let them go. That's it. There you go. There it is. From the man, from the horse's mouth. DC. What, what can you say, bro? <laughs> All right, y'all. Hey, that's it for the travel vlog. We here at the house. We actually just had a day one of practice. What, it's a couple bass in the uh, back. I know you. We can't do every, 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 every bass. I've been setting the, the hook all day. Yeah. So many bites, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's on fire. Hey, we're going to save that for the actual practice video. But uh, day one, Santa Cooper's a day. We're wrapping up the travel vlog. Thank you guys for checking us out. We had a good time. Thanks for the questions, too. Shout out. If you guys are not following me on Instagram, make sure you guys go to Insta my Instagram, Mark Daniels Jr., and follow my boys as well. But that's where I do the, the Q&A. So thank you guys for all the questions. I only answered about 10, but we had a lot of questions. So keep those coming. We'll catch you guys on the next one.